Hi everybody, Ian Bremer here around your world in 180 seconds. I'm here from Davos, so we are traveling a little bit and I have your questions lined up on my phone and we're ready to go. First of all, is the Russia-Ukraine war dominating the conversation in Davos? Yes, it is. Uh, there's only one side of the conversation here. Not true globally, but in Davos, there are no Russian delegates and I mean, frankly, pretty much every single person attending is saying as much as they can in favor of Ukraine. You see a lot of people like kind of dressed in the part uh, and certainly you're in Europe. And so as a consequence, the fact this is a war in Europe that ends the peace dividend. It's been topic number one, topic number two, topic number three. Kept me pretty busy, frankly. Um, are tensions between China and the United States escalating with Biden's recent pledge to defend Taiwan militarily? It's kind of the third time he's already said this. And it's the third time that the White House has walked it back. I think it's more important this time around because he did it in Asia. And he also did it in response to a pointed question saying, in the context of Ukraine, what about Taiwan? And he talked for a bit about it. He's like, yeah, if it came to that, then we definitely defend them. That, of course, is not official U.S. policy. In the past, Biden's advisors have been privately kind of happy that he's making it seem like the United States has a more aggressive posture, especially because inside domestic U.S. politics, that is generally speaking a popular position. Don't want to see Biden as soft on China. The reality is the United States doesn't need this position right now, especially because on the back of the United States leading a much stronger coalition in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the Russian military not doing well, the fact is that Ukraine is, you know, there are lessons for the Chinese in Taiwan that are actually going relatively well for the United States. So why would you cause this trouble? I suspect the Chinese will be much cooler diplomatically over the course of the coming weeks. And then finally, how will Australia's new prime minister reshape his politics? Frankly, on foreign policy, not so much. Strong member of the Quad, strongly supported the United States on Russia, for example. But when I think about the future, um, I, I would say climate change is the one big 180 that we're going to see in Australia's role globally. Uh, this is a country that had been focusing more on coal, had been one of the biggest, not climate deniers, but certainly slow moving in terms of renewability. Now you have a prime minister that wants to make Australia into a climate change superpower. That is an enormous issue that has been exercising the Australian people dealing with massive droughts, for example, for a long time now. And, uh, and it's a place that you'll see a little bit of positive movement um, in what's otherwise going to be a very challenging COP summit coming up in Sharm el-Sheikh later this year.